There's one movie I made about a guy named Ed Thigpen, and it's a very unique movie for me because a lot of the times I make the movie and I maybe know the subject. A lot of the times the people have, lo have been long since deceased. But I knew Ed really well, and he was actually my neighbor. And uh, I had seen him perform a lot, particularly in Copenhagen. And uh, I just always thought he was one of the greatest drummers of all time. But he was also one of the nicest guys you could ever meet. Um, I'm really happy to be sharing sections from my documentary, which is called Ed Thigpen, Master of Time, Rhythm, and Taste, um, because I think it'll be <coughs> nice for you to hear him in a new format, in a new medium. Uh, I think he still comes across extremely well. And what you will be hearing now, you're not going to be see, you know, hearing everything from the film because obviously some of the stuff is kind of visual. But this first part is about what are the life rhythms? You know, there is the heartbeat. There's the sound of the ocean. There's the sound of walking. There's the sound of being in a train or in a car. And Ed actually will discuss and illustrate that in the, and you'll be hearing that soon. And you'll also be hearing about what he felt about life and religion, and, and he's a very, very deeply religious fellow, and he was very much uh, opposed to drugs. He had seen too many people die too quickly when he was growing up in Los Angeles. And you'll also be hearing from probably four of the closest friends, uh, four of the closest people of his life. There's Donald Mead, who's a lifelong friend, a huge Jew, uh, jazz enthusiast, and there's Peter Levinson, who was a music manager. And more importantly, you'll be hearing from Denise Thigpen and Michelle Thigpen, his two children. So I hope you enjoy this podcast. I think Ed Thigpen is one of the greatest drummers ever, and he happens to live just a block away from me in Copenhagen, Denmark. Over the years, I've made an awful lot of music biographies, I guess you'd call them, and uh, normally I wouldn't appear in the films, but I thought it'd be a little different this time because I've actually known Ed Thigpen for about the last 15 years, and he's gone from being an acquaintance to a close friend. You always hear these things, these criticisms of movies. It's like, well, I saw the movie, but I didn't get to know him. I didn't see what he had for uh, breakfast in the morning. So uh, now, now what we'll I had for breakfast? You want to see what I had for breakfast? Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> For the record, Ed had cereal and yogurt for breakfast that morning with a cup of coffee, and when I came over, we each had another cup of coffee. I'd say it always begins with the heartbeat. Our mothers, our fathers, our parents' voices, cadences, dialects, all of those things have an effect. Our surroundings, the environment that we're brought up in, grasping the rhythm of nature. If you're in the forest sometimes during the autumn, and you brush, you know, walking through the leaves. Simulating breakers, waves, the ocean. As we grow, we start adding different things. I had the trains, the train brush. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> and so forth, no funny. We hear music, different types of music. as I said, the cadence of the voices, that we do, little children's songs, uh, religious songs in some cultures. Our environment plays a part, whether it's with the parents or schools, and as I said before, the culture that we're brought up in.
you have melody, you have rhythm, the rhythm of the melody, then you have the nuance, time and its nuances, physically feeling and mentally feeling. Lengths of sound carry time, time meaning the pulsation, and then the nuances of feeling that you put to it. You have a, a strict pulse starting with the pulse of the heartbeat. You start there and the, and the um, nuances become the melody and the harmony that is applied related to the rhythmic motifs. You have to be a good listener, you know, uh, and, and allow it to come through you. So my job or my function is I sit and listen to something, I try to latch on to what type of uh, time feel that that person has or that I wish to project.
My day starts out with meditation, prayer. And they say, will you go to church? I say, yeah, every day if I can, particularly where I'm living now and have been living for the last 26 years, 20, I, because I need it. It's important to me to do that. I find solace in it. I find uh, balance. Sometimes I'll go there and I've been so tired I almost fall asleep, but I need to be there, a place where I can be. It's important to him for all of the reasons why it should be important for all of us. Is that that's where you draw your strength from. Give thanks. Hope is eternal. It's the driving force that keeps him going. It's the laughing to keep from crying. It's the uh, sorting out of all of this crazy stuff that we live around. A lot of people wonder about drugs and stuff like that. But I learned very early in life, just from observation, there are a couple of young men just out of high school, extremely talented, but for some reason, which I have no idea what it was, got involved with drugs, hard drugs, hair on or whatever. And they didn't last. They don't, didn't, didn't last until they were 21 years old. I decided that couldn't be the way to go because it took you out of here too quick. Ed's very close to his family. His daughter, Denise, lives directly above him in the same apartment building, and his son, Michelle, lives just across the courtyard. His religion has really helped him, helped him a lot, and it gives him a lot of stability. But one thing that I think is very nice, it's, um, it's a personal thing for him, and he's happy to share it with people, but it doesn't sort of distance him from the rest of the world that might not share the same beliefs. He's a very, very nice, loving father who takes care of his children. He respects people for who they are. He's very professional in what he does. Has a very uh, noble approach, but a very nice humor underneath. He's always ready for, for a joke. He personifies for me what a human being should be. He's not just a musician. He's an educator. He's a friend. He's a father. He's a grandfather. But um, what's so unique uh, about him and what makes him so unique to a lot of people is that he's, he's, he's spent his entire life sharing himself with his public. He takes his work exceedingly seriously yeah. and I think he's had a good career because of that. He keeps up with the latest techniques in drumming and he's interested in the history of drumming and so he really has been able to teach because he knows the background as well as has great technique. Hey Boppers, Keon here, and you just heard Mr. Taste himself on a few of the things he draws inspiration from, for in his music as well as his life. We also heard from his friend and colleague Donald Mead, his children Denise and Michelle, and renowned jazz biographer Peter Levinson. These episodes are drawn from the film Ed Thigpen, Master of Time, Rhythm, and Taste, produced and directed by Don McGlynn, edited by Frank Axelson, Christian Mulkeelith, the sound by Thomas Martin. Bop is produced by Don McGlynn, co-produced by Mark Canner and Franny Alfano, and edited by me, Keon Vaziri. Join us for the next episode, where Don follows Ed to a gig. Until next time, thanks. Thanks.